You know, I wish there were more shows that knew how to stick the landing as well as Silo just did, because damn. Hello, everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did. If you haven't already, go like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. The final episode of the first season of Silo is here. It's called Outside, and boy, is it a doozy. You know, it's fun when a show manages to complete and tell a story that it's sort of built in season one, and then leave you breadcrumbs about pretty much salivating at the mouth about what's to come. For the future and this episode outside nails that and makes it truly uh, makes you truly appreciative that you spent the time going along with this where something like i hate to pick on this but class of 09 sort of dropped the ball in that this feels like you earn that time that you spend on those 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 episodes you've earned that here with this so the outside picks up right at the end with jules still looking at the uh the outside video of seeing the clear grass, the birch going. She keeps seeing that consistently. Um, and she's just sort of studying it and looking at it over and over again. And that's important to note because of what happens at the end, but just note that that's why they picked up this episode there with her watching it, because at that point she is studying it and knowing it and she's learning it and kind of taking it all in. It's going to be important for the back end. But she has to hightail it out of there. She takes Patrick and Danny, who learns the IT guy, and they, they have to get up out of there because she says to them, as good as Danny is, Bernard's better. And they're going to find out where this location is. And as <laughs> soon as she says that, you're correct. That team of crack scientists in that, uh, that control room find the location. And they go to Patrick's place. And they say it's in Patrick's spot. <laughs> Bernard does sort of check Sims. Be like, hey, I thought we looked at all friends. And Sims like, well, she's not a friend. She saved her, his life. Um, to just kind of show you that like we didn't lose any we didn't lose any stones. We just kind of missed this one because it fell under the radar and it wasn't somebody that we were actually looking forward to. But it does sort of show that Bernard still has some self-doubt towards towards Sims. As the Raiders are showing up, Jules, uh, Patrick, and Danny head into the trash chute. And that's where they're climbing down levels to the trash chute. But the team loses them. They have no idea where she's at. We then see that Sims gets a message from uh, the student that Billings had at his um, class about the pack, who sort of seemed to have turned a blind eye and looked the other way in that last episode. Turns out she didn't. She sent, still sent, sent Sims a message saying, hey, real quick, just so you're aware on the up and up, uh, Billings did come by Jules' apartment to ask questions and look up things. And Sims immediately goes to Billings like, hey, real quick, didn't I tell you to sit your ass down? <laughs> didn't I tell you not to come looking around there? Why did you do that? And Billings says, I was, like, I was doing this for the purpose of seeing if I could find out why Jules wanted to all of a sudden go outside. Maybe that could help me find out where she was because he felt I lost her. And Sims questions back, like, well, did that help you? He's like, no, I got nothing from that. He's like, cool. Can you help me understand why you arrested me? <laughs> like why you felt that you had to agree with her, why you sided with her. Like a lot of things that you've been doing don't make a lot of sense. Then, unfortunately for Billings, Sim sees that he's holding his other hand and it while it's shaking. Which unfor unfortunately gives Sim sort of the upper hand on Billings in this situation. Um, and while Billings looked like he was angry and seemed like in that last episode he was going to burn it, but kept that peace so he could remember like, yeah, I think they're lying to us. It seems like now he's going to be sort of put in his place because of the offer that Sims puts in front of him when we later see him speaking to his wife. Uh, as they're going down the chute, Jules and Danny and them find a spot where they can upload. Basically, um, they're going to upload the file that they've seen on the outside and sort of link that to multiple screens and show that to uh, everybody in the silo. And they succeed. When it goes live, Bernard about loses his ever-loving shh. You know what? Um, because he starts telling everybody in the control room, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. You don't see what you're seeing. Close your eyes. And he even tells Sims, you two Sims, turn around. You don't see this. And he quickly goes to the control monitor and uh, shuts it down. He basically shuts the system off. And then he says to the folks there, what you've seen today, you will unsee. Which, that's not how the brain works, Bernard, but sure, 
we will, we will, we will acquiesce to your command. Jules then splits from Pat and Danny as um, they go one way, Jules goes another. Pat's still asking about that watch. She's like, are you serious? At a time like that? Get the hell out of here. They split. They get caught. Uh, we don't see it on screen, but it is referred to us as an audience that they got the two guys. But she keeps going, and they still can't find out where she is. And then that's when it burst on the Bernard, like, she's in the shoot. If she's continuing to move this quickly and go down this way, we can't find her. She's in the shoot. To which point, Sim sends the Raiders to kind of start sending stuff down the shoot, sending big objects down the shoot to sort of jostle her free so she has to fall. Um, and after a bit of a back and forth, they send a couple items down. She eventually, um, they send a large item that basically starts bouncing off the walls back and forth and back and forth. There. If it hits her, it's going to kill her. Um, so then she just lets go the, the, the chute ladder and just falls back and falls into um, a trash pit in recycling. She is luckily grabbed right before the huge thing that is bouncing back and forth comes down. So it drops on top of her because she would have been crushed alive. That was all before the intro. <laughs> the silo theme had not even played yet. That's 11 minutes of just insanity. A lot of stuff unfolding really quickly um, in a short, amount of, a short amount of time. And man, that is a crazy way to start a season finale. So she's in Mechanical now. And of course, Judicial knows she's there. And um, it doesn't help that Knox sort of drops a dime immediately. It's like, yeah, no, she's in this room right here. She's in there with Walker and all of them. Yeah, I can, I can take you to her. <laughs> um, they show up and... Uh, Sim sort of lets lays in to to, to 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 Jules, and more he's doing it more so because he feels he has to protect his family. Like you threaten my wife and my son, my son Steele is talking about the crazy lady who came in with a gun. And she just researched like I would have never harmed your kids, and Sim's like tell that to my boy. He's a little bit of a loose cannon, so Bernard's like, hey, you got to leave. I, I got this from here. You got to take off. Um, at that point, he smashes the, the, the uh, hard drive so that no one else can use it or see it. And he puts a, pretty much a decree in front of, in front of Jules. He says, Jules, real quick, here's what's going to have to happen. I'm going to have to shackle you. And she's like, why? Because you think I'm going to lose Ken? He's like, no, I'm going to shackle you to prove a point. Like, I have to make it. She's, he basically wants to make anyone who thinks that they can do what you've just done, Jules, we want to make it a point that says, no, nah, they can't do that. We got to make you a martyr and make it a point to say, this ain't going to, this ain't going to fly here. In addition to having the shackle, I need you to say, stop telling people that you didn't ask to go outside because now people are starting to question that. And I need you to waive the uh, ability to have a hearing. I need you to take care, waive all of those things. If you do that, I think we can make a deal. And at that point, she just says, I just want to know what happens to George. And Bernard's like, cool. I not only will tell you, I will show you what happened to George. Do we have a deal? And the next thing you know, you see her shackled and they're starting to make their way back up the silo. Mind you, Walker, who she is, who she originally gets basically adopted by and is there with, she has never left that home. She's never left that building. It's been a big piece of her whole life is to always be there. Um, and so uh, they ask her to leave for a moment. She's like, I can't. They, they, they basically know that she's not going to cause any trouble because she's going to be in that place the whole rest of the time. So one of the better, it's a small thing, but one of the better pieces of this episode for me is when they're taking Jules back up the silo and people are sort of gathering around the sides and seeing this. For one side, for Bernard, it is working to an effect a little bit because there are some people who are like, yeah, see, she shouldn't have. The habitual line step got caught. She said, they kept, kept line stepping. And there are some people out there who are like, maybe she's on to something. Like, we saw that when it was on that screen. Like, she, she might be on to something. And the best part is there's a little girl who is looking at her and starts smiling. And Jules kind of gives her, like, a smile back to her. That's who Jules was when she was a kid. Like, that girl who's going to have that, you give that, that passing on of the flame uh, keepers. She's one of those people that you kind of give her a wink, wink, nod, because she's going to kind of keep that fight going, perhaps in some way or another, on her. That's kind of what I got from that. It wasn't a passing of the torch so much as saying, hey, let's keep this alive. You have something in you. You're looking at me as if almost a hero. Uh, and it was kind of cool to see how some people were reacting to this, this sort of parade that they were having. While this is happening, Walker does finally leave the place. and She goes to... Uh, a friend who 
not always her favorite, but works in supply. Um, and, and it's a big deal. Everybody knows that if Walker's leaving her house, it's a big freaking deal. Um, but she brings up the heat tape that we've all kept talking about, that everybody kept talking about at the very beginning that she stole. Um, and that Walker has a version of tape that hers is much better than the heat tape that they have there. It's important to note, we'll see it later, but the heat tape is what they sort of wrap the arms around of uh, people as they go out into, uh, into the cleaning. Jules is known to have stole some of that when she was younger, and Walker believes she has a better version of that. That's all going to be important. But she's going to the supply person and kind of say, hey, look, they got her. They're going into cleaning. Can I ask you to do a favor? We'll see what that favor is on the back end. Uh, Bernard takes Jules to the command center. And everybody's like, wait, wait a minute. You're just walking her into? He's like, yeah, I know I'm breaking protocol, but I made a, I made a promise. I, she's not going to she's going to clean. So she's not going to make it pit beyond many days. Um, and she goes in there. She sees the command center. And immediately, she's like, oh, we never stood a chance. And, and they're like, no, you didn't. Like, you're completely on tape and watch the entire time. Um, and then they pull up the file of what happened with George and George wasn't so much pushed as he did sort of self-sacrifice in front of a camera so that he could prove a point. He knew that somebody at some point in time may watch this video and he basically took his own life and it was sad for her to see, but that's when she had the realization like, okay, I, I got the answer that I was looking for. Now let's go ahead and do, let's get this over with. Let me go do the cleaning. She goes to get in lockup and while she's in lockup she gets some visitors she gets her dad brings some food some food that she used to eat when she was a kid and kind of there, there what for him feels like is going to be the last time that he sees his daughter and for the last, her probably the last time that she sees her dad um and sort of a come they had a reconciliation earlier in the season this is sort of their last moment together um to kind of live in some of the, the good times that they once had she also gets another uh visit from some more folks down there and uh mechanical and uh, they bring a gift of food, but it has a note um, that she reads off camera when she's not in camera, camera sight. And the note says, you wanted the truth. The truth is here. I love you. And they're good in supply, which is sort of a, a note to say that um, trust the supply that is given to you uh, when you're being prepped for the cleaning. Just trust in the supplies. That's basically what she's saying. And it's a note from Walker. And she, she realizes it's a note from Walker. Um, but uh, it means more once we see what actually happens in the finale, in the final part of this episode. So Billings goes to tell his wife, uh, Kat, that Sims is aware of his disease. And she goes into nagging mode real quick. <laughs> but he shuts it down like, no, it's all good. Um, they're giving me an exemption. The mayor and uh, the judicial are giving me an exemption, and uh, we're all good here. Which means, for all of us, he's now under their thumb. They have him dead to rights. If this is something that he wants to do, if he wants to provide for his family, if he wants to stay alive and provide for his family, he needs to shut up. Anything that he may have found in that home doesn't matter anymore. We're going to look the other way about your disease, and you get to be sheriff. And no one's going to question it. Because we said they can't. Um, when he knows himself that he's not fit for this job, and the only reason he's doing it is because he may know something that others don't. That's got to be a hard job to take. But your wife, the one who keeps every time you say something out of line, she's like, hey, 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 real quick, what you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to do this? You going to do this? He's like, no, nah, I don't want to do it all that. I'm going to just go ahead and take this job and keep my mouth shut. Damn, Billy. Bernard goes to see Jules for one last time. And look, here's the thing. I think Bernard from what I could gather from this talk that they have, I don't think Bernard is truly angry or hates Jules. He just realizes that she is a, a plague upon something that has been built and she need, he needs to suss that out. Like, I need to protect this world and you are a person that is doing everything to un upend that. It's like, but I do respect you and I do think you have, served, you have a purpose here. You had a purpose here. Your purpose was engineering and you chose to do something else in doing that. You wound up here. He asked her straight point blank, do you regret, regret taking this position? She, she, she said, no, I, I, I'd do it again. Bernard starts saying, like, I take no pleasure in this. Uh, he's like, you asked me once, when do you think this started? Or when did, did your trouble start? And uh, she references the tape 
the heat tape. He's like, no, that, that, that's not when it started. It started when you were born. You weren't supposed to be conceived. Um, your parents had you, even though we had basically made it so that they couldn't. Uh, and, and she was like, well, is this sort of your roundabout way of closing that loop and getting rid of that? And he's like, no, 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 it's too simple. You served a purpose. You had a purpose. You, you were useful to the silo. You kept the engineer going. You kept everything going. Like You had a usefulness here. But then when you started, when you took the sheriff position, started asking questions about George, you, your usefulness lessened and your nuisance to what we had sort of built here grew, and we just can't have that. It became a, a mortal threat to the safety here at the silo. And so here, this is where we're at. Um, and he gets up and is about to leave. And as he's leaving, he says, congratulations, by the way. You've got the biggest viewing of people for cleaning ever in the history of the silo. And that includes Holston, who was like a, a fan favorite, a, a well-beloved man here there in the silo. Uh, I don't know what the hell she's supposed to do with that. Like, cool, thanks, people here to watch me die. But I think he is saying that you did galvanize some people. We have to do everything now, just take that gal galvanized group and sort of quelch that. Um, and I'm hoping that this, seeing you do the same thing that everybody else has done, ends that. She at that point says, like, I'm not going to clean. Like, I won't clean. And he's like, no one intends to. No one intends to when they go out there. But they do. They always do. At that point, they start preparing jewels for the clean. Um, and it's so well done. Like, it's, it takes its time. It's doing piece by piece. It's putting on the suit. It's helmet. It's showing the taping, uh, which is important. It's, it's showing all of this, which we have seen way earlier in the season. We saw it with some characters with, with Holston and with his wife, where we didn't quite know what it all meant, but now that we have all of this history, it, it has even more of an impact and more of a weight to it. Everybody's in the cafeteria watching the screen. Walker makes her way all the way up to this point. And everybody's sort of whispering because they know they haven't seen ever seen her. They've heard of her, but they've never seen her. And they know that if she's coming out, this is a big, this is a big deal. At that point, uh, Jules is asked if she has any last words, and she says, I'm not afraid. So at that point, she makes her way. They do like the clean cleansing system where they put her open one door, put her in, close that door, sterilize it, and then send her out into uh, the outside. And she goes out and she sees a world that is as green um, with the birds flying, just as the video screen display that she saw on that, on that uh, computer monitor always showed. But she's watching it and she sees it. And because she had spent so much time watching that video that George sent her on that file and seeing the loop, she was realizing that that was a loop that she was seeing in her screen. Like, it's the exact same thing just in her screen. She's saying this whole, the display is a lie. What she's getting fed, something, it's not telling the truth of what actually is out there. Um, and it's at that point, she realizes like, oh, okay, I see, I see what's happening here. She goes over to the camera, takes out the tile that normally people would clean the screen with and just drops it. And you get a little bit of hubbub you get some people who are like, oh, or some people are saying boo, and some people are like, oh, what are you doing? And they're understanding that she's sort of a rebel and doing her own thing. At that point, Sam's like, hey, do we, what do we want to do? Do we want to do something about this? And Bernhardt's like, nah, we good. We good. She's going to be gone in just a moment, so we're not going to have to worry about this at all. Because it's about this time that the atmosphere that's outside would start harming them. Now, what's crazy is that us, because we see this from the very beginning, that atmosphere looks clean. It looks like, oh no, you should be able to habitat that. Like, where? Why wouldn't this be perfectly fine and all clean and, and all dandy? But it's not. Uh, it's at that point that Jules goes to the spot where, in her display, there is nobody there. <laughs> this is where Bernard's like, oh crap, wait a minute. She knows she's going to the spot where on the display nobody's there, but she's watched that cafeteria screen so many times. Um, with Lucas, that uh, she knows exactly where Holston and his wife fulfill. And so he goes over, she goes over to that spot and takes out his, uh, his, his badge that has truth on it and just puts it in the display. She can see at that point that because she's sort of breaking the plane of the display and putting something actual down, she can see sort of the the hologram images that are kind of happening around it and seeing that this is, there's nothing there and there's nothing real. Now, 
to the audience, to the people in the cafeteria, she they're she's seeing they're seeming as if she's sort of stumbling and having a moment next to Holston in them. But then that display, there's nothing there. And that's kind of where Holston and his display originally went to his, his wife and realizing that there's nothing there. And that's when he kind of failed too, because unlike Holston, the tape that he had wasn't sound enough or wrapped enough or good enough quality to keep the air quality in her suit well. And he did actually, from what we see, pass out. We don't know because then Bernard runs to uh, a, a room with the 18 key um, and opens it up and then goes in and pretty much cuts the display off. And when he cuts the display off for her, she then sees that she's in a world of complete and total, it's like an apocalypse. Everything that they said was the truth. They've been feeding them a lie, but the lie wasn't that the world is jacked up. The lie was that there's this clean world and hopefully it'll get better. It is an inhabitable. It looks like pure hell out there. It is fascinating, but she's still allowed to leave, breathe because the tape that Walker has put on there is much better than what she's what everybody else is giving. Now, here's what's interesting. We don't see the bodies of Holston, the other guy, I forgot who was out there, and his wife. They're not there either. This is just her. Um, and she's sort of just looking at what appears to be a land of multiple silos. Now, I don't know how many silos there are. There's no way to count that. And there are far distance, you see some buildings, but we don't really get a close look of that. I'm wondering, this is just me spitballing right here. I'm wondering if the 18 means, means that they were the 18th silo that was sort of built at this time. Uh, that's the only way that I can sort of think that 18, because it looks like they were, they're definitely not at the very beginning. They're not the first, but they're also not last. There's still stuff around and behind them. But I think maybe they're the 18th silo that has been built because there are multiple silos that are built and they all have a hologram camera that sort of are doing the exact same thing that are telling people, this is the way to sort of keep everybody honest, project this hope or world that, hey, maybe we can get out. But we all know that we can't and we're sort of stuck here. So how did we get there? Like, how did this world get developed? Who created this world? Who These are massive civilizations that exist here. How do we create these? Just so many more questions get asked. And I can't wait to dig in to season two just, just to figure out what that is. A really well, well done show. Like, I, I can't wait. And I've looked up since just to see when we're getting season two because I know with this, the writer strikes and whatnot. It can be a little bit dicey. Apparently, Rebecca Ferguson says that the scripts for the second season are already done and they've already sort of begin filming. Now, that, if the actor strike happens, then that's when they're going to stop all of that. But right now, we don't. We won't really have a gap like we're having with like a great show like The Last of Us. We won't have that gap where we don't have a show coming on. Like this is coming right after this, and I am excited to see how much world stuff we build. Like, this, can she go back to the silo and tell them like, hey, real quick? It ain't good out here. Everybody, let's put this tape on. Let's go. Let's go fight. And let's go see what's happening. Like, who knows what her next step is? But she takes that climb over and just sees this world of just destruction. And so, for her, her whole thing has always been able to to find the truth, to get the truth, to to know the truth. Now, she has the truth. What does she choose to do with it? It's going to be what we see in season two. What did you guys think about this final episode of the first season of Silo called Outside? Just leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You're going to hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast by the same name. That's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other place podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours. <laughs>